let's go. All right. Thank you all for being here. We are so glad uh, to be here today to, to present you this talk. Um, so first, let's start by introducing each other. So this is Romain. I'm Jordan. Uh, we've been working in mobile engineering for quite some years now. And uh, we've been working at JobTeaser for almost four years. Uh, in case if you don't know JobTeaser, JobTeaser is a European leader of recruitment of young talents. So basically, we are building tools uh, to build the best platform where students can find internships and jobs in order to enter to their career. So we are here today to talk to you about mobile and end-to-end -to -end testing. Uh, first, during this talk, we would like to introduce you first to the concept of shift left and how end-to-end -end -to -end testing enter into this concept. Then we would like to dig a little bit into our own experience at Job Teaser, And uh, finally, and I think that's why you're here, introduce you to Maestro, the last addition to our stack. So as I said, first I want to talk to you about the concept of shift left in the mobile engineering and in the engineering world in general. So shift left is an engineering concept uh, emphasizing the fact that you need to test uh, your features as soon as possible and the earlier possible in your development. So uh, it helps you catching bugs way before the release and also shipping your product and your application with a lot more confidence. So let's try to take a look to a schema. I think that will ring a bell to some of you. So uh, usually we all experience that, uh, finding some bugs and issues with our application after the production, after once the application is in the end of our users. So that's the red lines you can see on the screen right, right now. Uh, so you can find memory leaks, security issues, networking issues, a lot of issues. You all encounter these uh, issues in your uh, development phases. And shift lifting is simple as we want to find those issues, as, as I said before, the earliest possible in our possible in our development. So during the development phases, that's it. And one way to do shift lifting, uh, to enter to this concept, is by using end-to-end -end testing. Uh, so I don't know if some of you know end-to-end -end testing, maybe by raising the heads. Some of you? Okay. It has, it has some different names. You can all, uh, find it also by UI testing. Uh, for those who are aware at the conference of Xavier this morning, it's at the top of the end-to-end -to -end of the test pyramid. So basically, it's testing your application by reproducing behavior of the users automatically on uh, some devices or emulators. And that's, at, that's what we did at Job Teaser in order to improve the shift left concept during our development phases. Okay, so let's talk about uh, your expenses. Uh, four years ago, we reboot all the mobile app at Job Teaser, and the company was also uh, lift, shift lifting and introduced end-to-end -to, -end to the global stack on the web, the mobile. So. For us, it was the best moment to say, okay, we will build an app and we build it with end-to-end uh, -end test in mind. So uh, with Q engineers, we build a testing stack to say, to uh, help us to reach this goal to catch the most bug uh, before going to production. So um, uh, <laughs> um, this is the stack we get at the end. Uh, the technology is not very important, but to make you a quick resume, it's we have Cucumber to just describe the test, WebDriver, IO, Appium to automate, automating the test and writing stuff, the test codes, and running them on both our stack and uh, making reporting with Allure. Don't worry if you don't know this technology, it's not very important, but to resume, we have uh, actually uh, five different technologies to uh, run our end-to-end -end test. So how a test look like? Um, it was pretty simple, pretty cool to read, very readable, because like this, you can see a test of your app just, okay, I'm on the landing page, I want to click on the sign-in button. So when you're looking like this, say, okay, it's cool, I understand, it's running also on iOS and Android, and uh, pretty simple, I understand perfectly. But the implementation is more complicated uh, in the real life because uh, under the hood, we have to do a lot of implementation. Um, 
to uh, declare selector uh, like uh, accessibility ID to find elements of the in the UI and many uh, codes uh, that need to maintain to uh, in order to run this test. So when we implement a test and define a screen, uh, it takes more than just uh, the five uh, lines of code you see uh, slide before. So uh, when we build this, this stack, uh, we build uh, the app at the same time we write the test. So it was pretty cool. We done a lot of things about end-to-end -end testing. We have a good pace at the beginning when the app was simple. It will be more complicated later. And effectively, we catch a lot of bugs that uh, will be finished in, uh, without this in a um, hot fix release. But some problems. Uh, don't, I don't uh, talk about the technology behind it, but it was running on Node with TypeScript. Uh, a lot of technology that maybe some mobile engineers are not very uh, confident with it, to work with it. Not very complex, but... Uh, it, you have to time to adapt to the stack. Uh, we introduce some complexity uh, since the app grows, uh, screen and flows grows also, and made more, um, began more and more complex. So uh, they start to, time, to take more and more time to write new tests and maintain them. Uh, so some engineers start to lo lose some motivation to, to write them. And so. Um, as Roman uh, presented, we were quite happy with the solution and the stack, but as I said, it has its cons. So we wanted to have another look at our solution and maybe try and find ways to improve our stack. And last year, we came into a new tool called Maestro, and that's why you're here. So what is Maestro? Uh, Maestro is an end-to-end UI uh, automation testing tool. Uh, it was created last year by the team from mobile.dev. It's an open source project, so you can go through the code into uh, their website and into GitHub. Uh, fully written in Kotlin, so that's good for Android developers. And also very important is cross-platform. That's something really important for us, that we want to write only one test that we can use on our iOS app and also on our Android app. So you can, you can use Maestro today to write tests for Android iOS or even Flutter or React Native code. And most important thing, it's as sailed by mobile.dev, really simple to use. So let's take a look into it. So in Maestro, a test is called a flow. Basically, a flow is just a list of comments that run on your device in order to create a test. Those tests, are, those flows, are written in YAML, which is a really simple and declarative syntax. And a really useful thing is that those flows are composable. So that means that a test can call another test in order to uh, test bigger features. So that's really useful. It's used really simple comments. I don't know if you guys know a little bit of EML, but those comments are really pretty easy to read and to be written. So as you can see here, you can see some classic comments like tap on an element, assert that an element is visible, uh, check some, write some text into some input, and also native comments such as back or home button. So re really easy. Also, the structure is really easy to use. So this is, this is a test, as you can see. Uh, you just have to write your package, package name into the launch app comment, saying that it will launch the application on your simulator, on your emulator. And then just tap the comments to, to launch on your screen. So for example, I, here I tap on a button, then I swipe down, and I assert that a text or a button or a view is visible. Pretty easy. And with that information, you know most of the things that you need to know to write a test with Maestro. Really easy. But uh, I'm sure that a lot of you have complex features and really big tests to write uh, for your application. So Maestro came with another tool called uh, Maestro Studio, made it to, uh, created to make your test even easier to write. So Maestro Studio is a no-code UI automat automation sorry, tool. It just use uh, your simulator, and you you just you will just have to run uh, commands by just uh, clicking on stuff and uh, using your scenario, uh, your test, your manual testing scenario, and it will directly transform those commands into EML code. So pretty easy. It will inspect every UI element, so you don't need to go back to your code to find IDs or stuff like that. And then it, everything, as I said, will be exported. Record it and export it into a YAML file in order to have your test. 
So it looked like that. So on the, on the, that this is the Maestro Studio 2. So on the left, you can see your emulator running. And you can move directly on the, on the screen, see the elements. And when you click on an element, it will propose you different type of action. So you can use comments uh, here. You can, uh, for example, tap on a, on a comment. And then you can also choose the accessibility accessibility uh, you want to use. It can be a text, it can be an ID, it can be position also. And you can have other comments such as uh, assert that something is visible. So with this tool, it's really, really easy to record the flow and to create a test. You can do it just by some minutes. Uh, you can interact directly with your app in real time, so that's, that's really cool. And also there is no dependency, so that means that you can just download the tool today and try to use it with your application, and of course, any other application. Uh, there are still some downs to the solution, so you don't have all test comments accessible to Maestro Studio. For example, you cannot swipe down or up. Uh, that's pretty a shame for now. And you cannot update uh, already existing test. So let's see. Yes, yeah, so like we said, it's very easy to implement in your existing app, so that's why we take the app from the Android makers, from the Play Store and write uh, some tests on it. Uh, so we'd say, okay, let's take your talk, uh, take the app, find your talk, check if we have the speaker on it, uh, put it in favorites, and after, go back and display the favorite list to see if uh, your talk uh, appears. So uh, we will start by the end by showing you the test running. Uh, so we have the command line on the side, so not very important, just it check all the step. You have a green check when all is good. And you can see on the right, the simulators running, so it's searching your stalk and bam, very fast. Uh, so and the, we take the Play Store app, so nothing what be installed, like I uh, said before. So now, how does the test look like to make something like this? Because we test something very interesting. Oh, little. Some pixels are losing, but it's okay. So it takes only 10 commands to run to create this test, to run this test. Um, so I will not detail all the tests because I already described it. Uh, the only thing I can say is just the Android Maker app don't have accessibility IDs for the elements, so we base your test on the content uh, of the button of the element. So it's not very good practice, but uh, it's okay. Uh, so for me, I write this test in two minutes with the help of Maestro Studio, so it was very fast and very easy to, to write something. Uh, so now you can write your test, it's cool, uh, you're happy, but you will not write, run all your testings on your machine because boring. Uh, <laughs> uh, so how you can implement uh, Maestro uh, in your development flow? So uh, the first solution is Maestro came with a cloud solution, a mobile dev, so it's kind of CI dedicated to run only Maestro tests on it. Uh, so how it works, it just, uh, you upload your binaries and your test files and Maestro handling all the stuff like boot, uh, bootstrapping devices, etc., and running uh, the tests and making the reports. Uh, for the moment, Maestro uh, only run on simulators, not on uh, real devices. Uh, because the uh, company is still young and they want to provide this, but later. Uh, but honestly, for, uh, if you don't have to test performance stuff, it's really okay. And uh, you can also integrate it to GitHub pull request if you want to uh, add a notion of a smoking test, like running a little suspect of a test uh, when you open a pull request on a certain screen and stuff like that. So on the cloud, when you have problems and a little screenshot, uh, so you have access to the test uh, where the step we failed. You have a video that shows you where the test failing. You have also the view hierarchy and also the device logging. So you can really see how what's going wrong. Uh, so when you integrate in, uh, in GitHub, you have a little uh, green check mark. Um, also, you can also run directly uh, Maestro on your CI if you want. Uh, it's hard. You need more engineering for this one because you need to set up your own test environment. Uh, so it's a little bit harder. And you don't have the same f uh, set of features uh, for reporting when you have a problem. Uh, you just have a little unit report and saying this test failed, but that's all. So it's not 
very um, very good, but uh, you can do it if you want to run on your own system. It's totally possible. So the big question is, are we happy for our solution? So we've been uh, at JobTeaser migrating uh, from our past stack to Maestro for some months now. And spoiler alert, yeah, we are quite happy with it. But it has some cons. Um, first, the reporting is less powerful than what we used to have before. That means that we, you cannot find a full report of everything. You have to dig into each report to know what test failed and what was the issues during your automation test. Um, as Roman said, it's still a young product, so uh, still have some issues, some bugs. As I said before, for example, with Maestro Studio, you cannot find the, the scrolling tools command or stuff like that. Um, and also, it's, as you said, it's really limited to simulators right now. Um, and also, if you want to use the best experience with your uh, integration, uh, continuous integration tools, it's best to use their own cloud platform. But on the bright side, we are today writing end-to-end uh, -end tests way, way faster than we used to before. So it's help us and our developers win a lot of time uh, when at these phases of the development we, when we are writing tests before uh, putting our app into production. Um, so as Roman said also, we don't have any things to learn compared to um, our previous stacks. So that means when you get a new developer coming to the squad or to your teams, he don't have, doesn't have to learn uh, like uh, TypeScript or stuff like that. It's really easy to, to write tests with PML or just my social studio. Um, so you are winning time, but you're also winning money because uh, we are also winning money with that because it's way cheaper uh, today than the solution that we got before. Uh, also, as it's still a young product, uh, the team is really active on the development of Maestro. So the product is, move, is moving fast, sorry. Uh, so they're adding new functionalities really quickly, and that's pretty uh, interesting for us to be in the early phases uh, to use these products. And most importantly, we reduced our maintenance cost to zero because if I show you, uh, show you, show back the previous type that we got before, we got five tools using these stacks from automation tools to run and report. And today we are only using Maestro and their cloud solution. So it's really easy to integrate for us and really easy to use to the day to day. That's it for us. Thank you very much uh, for listening. You can find all the resources here that we use for the presentation. A really cool article by mobile.dev uh, on shift left. I recommend all for you to read it. And also all the documentation you need to know about Maestro, you can find it on their website and on their GitHub project. As I said, it was open source. And if you get questions, guys, we'll be happy to answer to them. Thank you very much.